call to order the March 11th meeting of the Campbell County School Board. I'd like to welcome everybody here. And we'd like to open our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You can have a seat. Miss Hundley. Yes. See you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I'm happy to be here tonight to talk to you about something besides our personnel report. Um, I'm here tonight to talk to you with our mentor coordinators, who I hope are going to join me up here, Mark Wilburn and Paul Dietz. They are our mentor coordinators. Mark and Paul both are from Texas. Mark started two years last year. He, this is his second year as our mentor coordinator. Um, and Paul just joined us this year. They both taught at the secondary level and had similar positions in Texas as our mentor coordinator position. They were instructional coaches. This is where they actually met. Um, Paul joined this year after Paul really helped, after Mark really helped us solidify our mentor program. So if you remember, several years ago, we had a retired elementary principal serving in this role. But at that time, it was part time, and we were really just um, helping teachers that principal said, hey, I have a teacher in my building that needs some extra support. So Mark came in and Paul joined this year to really coordinate a mentor program for our new teachers. So I'm excited to be able to share um, this, this presentation with you tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to them. They're going to tell you about the program, and then I'll come back up at the end and share some more information with you. Did y'all come as a package from Texas? Kind of. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, and we're not going back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this all right? Disappeared on us. We'll have to play it old school. Well, we'll live. We'll live, and we'll share it with you. How about that? We'll come back to it. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, maybe not at all. Have mercy. There we go, that'll work for now. Um, my name's Mark, and I'm Paul. it's Paul. Uh, I serve Alta Vista Elementary, Brooklyn Elementary, Concord Elementary, Lisa Road Elementary, Brooklyn Middle School, Brooklyn High School, and William Campbell Combined School. It's a lot. I serve the rest. Yeah. Um, so we, we have about 70 teachers each, uh, with about 25 focused teachers that we have really zoomed in on uh, to support this year. And those 25 teachers are mostly first year teachers with us um, this year. Some with experience, some without experience, um, some with degrees in education, some not at all. Um, and so one thing to note here is that we both work pre-K to 12. Um, that has been really helpful uh, as we troubleshoot different things so that not one person is stuck trying to figure out all the things for that, that area. We have people to work with and bounce ideas off each other as we also work with the other stakeholders involved. There's three main areas that we work with, uh, avoiding burnout, cultivating positive classroom culture, and targeting teaching moves. Um, and many of these are unique to Campbell County. These are the type of mentors that we have across the division. Um, we have lead mentors. We have one lead mentor, sometimes two, at every campus. Every mentor is assigned a new teacher. When I say new teacher, I really mean teacher that's new to Campbell County. It doesn't mean they're new to the profession. Um, we have specialty mentors, which are teachers that teach more niche things. Um, you got PE, you have fine arts, um, even special education mentor and second we have mentors for second year mentees um, and we also have uh, our model teachers so these are teachers that we pay to model off best instructional practices for some of our our newer teachers and then the type of mentees are here yep so you can see our type of mentees uh, one thing to note is no matter 
how many years of experience you have. If you're new to Campbell County, you're going to receive a mentor on campus to make sure that your transition into our systems and structures is smooth uh, because, I mean, obviously I'm from Texas, he's from Texas. Things run differently in different counties, different states, and we want to make sure that everybody has a nice, smooth transition into Campbell County systems. So here's a breakdown of kind of our support and uh, where our time is spent. It begins with enrollment. That's in our Cruising to Success Week, which we'll talk about in a moment. That's our new teacher academy before school starts with all of our new hires. Um, it also entails us meeting one-on-one -on -one in two sessions with every teacher that's new to Campbell County, um, figuring out what their strengths are, figuring out you know what their, their needs are, where they're coming from, so that we can offer different types of support for them to choose based on their experiences. And also you'll see just to the right of that, we have coaching cycles. So focus teachers, if you are a brand new teacher, zero years of experience, this is your first year, you're going to be a fo focus teacher automatically. And then you see maybes on one, two, four plus. Um, that's at principal's discretion. So if you are a second year teacher, you could become a target or a focus teacher. Um, if you are a 15 year veteran and a principal says, hey, we need some extra help here, you can also <coughs> become a focus teacher to get uh, coaching cycles with us every two weeks. And we'll explain what a coaching cycle here is in a moment. Um, every new teacher to Campbell County is going to get uh, a mentor, like we said, and they're going to meet at minimum for 10 to 15 minutes with their mentor to go over specific items that hit classroom culture, campus items, as well as some light instructional moves to help elevate wherever they are coming in, whether it's a veteran or even a brand new teacher. That's every teacher that's new to Campbell County. And then we meet with every one of those teachers once every six weeks to get a pulse check on how they're feeling, how things are going, what are things that they've noticed about us that they could help bring to what we're already doing that's good and elevate us um, and mainly just give them a voice is kind of the big piece, especially for the veterans that are coming in. Um, so here's a few tools that we have. So on the left, you'll see mentoring checklist. Um, so this is a tool that our mentors have available to them and also the mentees, all the new teachers come in. Uh, they, they have this tool. It's a resource that focuses in on fostering relationships, developing routines, and uh, the physical space of the room. And so we, we use these things to help teachers figure out where their weaknesses and strengths already are so they can, they can begin crafting goals for themselves in areas that they want to grow in the classroom. The mentors are also given a monthly checklist that changes that's based on the specific needs of that campus in that month. And it kind of goes and ebbs and flows with the new teacher. There's a cycle for new teachers on kind of where they go from coming in excited to starting to see the reality of the job to even a little bit of a disillusionment around Christmas and then rejuvenation towards that second semester. And so that, that checklist also goes with those, those different, um, I would say life, the life cycle of a teacher, the stages of a new teacher. Um, so here's our coaching cycle. This is for just our focus teachers, our, our brand new teachers, fresh out of college or career switchers. So these are those 25 each that we have. This is primarily what our job entails. So we talked about our induction. We talked a little bit about our enrollment. These are things we do before we start our full on coaching. And then here's our coaching. So our coaching looks kind of like this. So the first time we meet, we kind of get into mission, vision. We look at some classroom culture checklists that we've developed with secondary and elementary coaches to say these are the foundations of what a good classroom in Campbell County should look and sound like. Where are you at on this? Um, and then that leads us into some target moves where we get to bring miniature professional development to say, here's some areas where we can elevate those needs. Now let's go see them in action. Once they see them, they can identify them and they can be able to easily take the feedback that we give them and say, hey, we know we've seen this. These were kind of the binary, the forms that we use to show this is, you know, for example, um, having eyes in the back of your head. It's a skill that teachers learn. They're not typically born with. So there's a way to teach that. It's called classroom, um, the classroom um, teacher radar. Um, but here's what it looks and sounds like so that when we come in, we can give cool feedback. It's not cold. You've been warmed up a little bit on what it looks and sounds like. And then we can reflect before we move on to our next skill. So that's kind of most of what our job is. And I just wanted to note, um, we hear Dr. Hale say a lot, we want to be rooted in research. So we don't pull these, these target moves just out of thin air. Uh, we talk to our stakeholders, we talk to our coaches, our, our curriculum team, and we do a lot of research ourselves just to dig in and make sure that we're giving the right skills to the teachers as they need them. Um, and we're going to share those resources with you at the end today. We'll email those out to each of you. We have them together. Um, in the second semester, they get to choose their adventure a little bit. So we kind of directed them in the first semester. Our, our first semester, our new teachers said, here's the route you're going to take. 
These are kind of the, the, the tiered skills that new teachers should be building on in terms of classroom management, managing your classroom, and rigor and instruction. And then we move into our second semester where they kind of come with problems. And we sit down and we use a coaching model from Jim Knight to help kind of get them towards action items so they can start focusing on getting to those solutions within a week. Um, and then we come back every two weeks and we decide to stay on that or move to the next. And the idea there is in the second semester, we really want them shifting towards ownership of the classroom. Uh, because if they don't own the classroom, if they don't own those four walls, it's gonna be very difficult for them to continue in our profession. And so we wanna build that confidence first and then give them the keys, so to speak, while we're still in the car with them driving alongside along with their principals and all their other support. And they have the option for opting out and going into an observation feedback, a learning walk and seeing their other fellow teachers teaching or just having a conversation about burnout, which we have a guide to help us um, stick to that script there. So overall, this was kind of the, the, the main takeaways um, from our surveys. In, in January, we had every teacher was satisfied this year with their induction to Campbell County with 83% above um, that meets 97% of our new teachers this past year said they saw growth through the coaching cycles um, through our mentoring program um, They said 92% uh, of our new teachers prefer they said they prefer the cognitive coaching as opposed to Coming in and just giving observation and feedback having that one-on-one -on -one coaching session They said it was the most valuable piece of the coaching cycle um, Which was pertinent information for us as we move forward and then one thing here at Campbell County that we really want to make unique about our county is that we want to make sure that all support to all individual teachers is tailored to specifically to their needs. Uh, we don't want to just bring them in and blanket them with some generic feedback for everybody. Uh, we really try to get to know each individual teacher as they come in so that we can provide and tailor specific support to their specific needs. Um, and so these are some of the ways that we do that. So what you'll see most of the, mostly across other areas and other divisions is mentoring is just a buddy system where they come in for a week or two there's the copy machine hey let me know if you need anything and then it kind of ta tapers off and it doesn't hit those instructional practices it doesn't help a teacher who comes in um, with very little baseline so when you ask them hey let me know if you need anything they're like I don't know what I need to ask so we help provide a framework for them to grow without that that background knowledge so Looking ahead, this is what we're excited about for our, really it's gonna be our third year. Mm -hmm. So right now, a, a gap that we've identified in our mentoring services is with our second year teachers. Uh, we wanna have a gradual release model. And right now, we do have mentors available to our second year teachers and we do provide some support to them, but we think that we can fill in some gaps there uh, to provide a little bit more so it's a little bit less, hey, first year, here's 15 different ways you're being supported. Second year, you have a mentor, good luck. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're gradually releasing that uh, that support so that way by the time they get to their third fourth year they're ready to fly and we're looking at building communities through some new teacher academies that are ongoing after schools next year that we pay them for um, more growth um, conversations that's that cognitive coaching that we talked about um, we're actually going to double the amount of those for our teachers next year and the next year we'll also have clear licensing pathways we're excited about some of the options that we have for presenting um, that to our teachers which we'll get to here in a moment as well so I'm gonna pass it over to the lovely Amy Hunt. So Mark and Paul really are, um, before we get into this, that's scrolling quickly, but um, they are highly skilled in presenting professional development and educational coaching. So our mentor program really was reactive before. Like I said, we were going in and we were assisting teachers when they started to struggle. That's not how we should do things. We need to be preventing that struggle from happening as much as we can. We're all gonna struggle a little bit, um, but they have really coordinated this program and put some systems in place that make that possible. It really is unique to Campbell County. When we do these surveys and we have exit surveys, they did a mid-year mentoring survey, we'll do another one at the end of the year. Um, we get great feedback on those things. Um, couple slides prior, without scrolling all the way back, they didn't go into a lot of the induction things just for time's sake, but we, we're starting now with next year. Um, as I've mentioned to you when we did our career fair, um, we're getting ready, we've already hired, I'll give you some numbers during my personnel report, but we've already hired about 30 teachers for next year. So we start what we call first touches and we start to send emails to welcome. We send cards, we s we'll send a newsletter so that our new teachers coming into Campbell County already know who, my, who, who the key players are in my office that they need to talk to, who Mark and Paul are, so they have those contacts um, when they start with us. 
starting the summer at summer orientation. Um, that's really when we get our new teachers in and just give them a little bit of a taste so that we can get them ready for cruising to success, which is in August. Um, one of the best things about our summer orientation, it's quite a visual. I can send you guys those dates if you want, um, if you'd like to stop by those. But we have a small group of new teachers and uh, so many central office staff are surrounding them. We do it in the media room in the tech center. And it, it, we just ask them to look around and say, look at, look at all these people here. All of these people are here to support you. So that's at summer orientation. Cruising to success is our, um, we've always had new teacher week, right? I mean, everybody knows new teachers come back four or five days earlier than regular teachers. Well, we leveled it up this year and we came up with this cruising to success theme. We made it fun, we made it welcoming. You'll see some pictures of um, pirates and captains up there, <laughs> Paul and Mark dressed up to make it fun. Even adult learners like to have fun and feel welcomed. Um, so we had a lot of, um, fun things going on that week, but it was also very informative. And the mid-year surveys that we did truly showed that this Cruising to Success Week um, was a success. And that is a collaborative effort. So while Mark and Paul lead kind of the charge of the fun things and getting the days going, Dr. Hale's staff and Ms. Walsh's staff and technology staff and spe all senior staff is involved in the planning of that. Um, we've actually already had two planning meetings for next year. We just had one this past Friday to start getting everybody on the same page and thinking and saying, okay, we, we did all this last year. What worked? What didn't work? What do we need to change? What do we need to make better? And what can we add to it? So we're looking forward to continuing to plan our cruising to success week. Um, our career fair, obviously, we just had that a little bit ago. The last um, board meeting was the Monday after the career fair, so I didn't get a chance to give you a lot of information about it. But we did have about 140 people come to our job fair. We've hired 16 of those people already. 10 of those are teachers, six are classified staff. Um, if you remember, um, I mentioned that we had different recruitment, for lack of a better word, tables, but we wanted everyone that came to know the support offered in Campbell County. So of course, Mark and Paul were there for a mentoring table. We had folks from our benefits office, from central office. We had our technology staff showing off some of the fun things that they have to support. Um, Dr. Pontius and his staff was there for special ed and licensure and I teach were also there. I'm gonna talk about I teach in a minute, but licensure is an area that we realize is getting more difficult and our folks need more help with that. So if you remember, I teach, I mentioned back in probably July, it was August because we started the partnership in July. I teach is a new thing that was approved by the state back in the summer. We had just started hearing about it and um, Mark actually had mentioned it to me um, when he started in Virginia because licensure in Texas was a whole lot easier than it has been in Virginia. Well, that's because I teach started in Texas about 20 years ago. So we're just getting up to speed with having a more efficient way and affordable way for our teachers to achieve full licensure. Um, so it's an alternative route to licensure. It's online, self-paced, flexible, affordable, um, way for these career switchers and new teachers or people that have a passion for teaching that want to be a special ed teacher, for example. Well, if you are going back to get a license to be a special ed teacher, you have about nine college courses that you have to take. Well, this is the way that it, it can be done much easier, faster, and affordable. They're CAPE accredited classes, so they're all embedded. All of the courses that teachers have to take to get their teach teaching license are embedded in these modules. Um, it's the professional studies classes. So if you don't go to college to be a teacher, you have to learn how to teach to be a teacher. So that's what those professional studies courses are. Special ed, understandably, has a few more classes that they have to take because that's a little bit of a different skill set. And then elementary education too with all of the literacy stuff and um, things like that. So there's a few more classes, but it's all embedded in, all for the same price. They also offer praxis preparation, so um, that's something that we also need. We have some teachers that need to take the praxis, so I teach offers that those prep classes for that. It also um, transfers master's degree credits. We just hired a special ed teacher at one of our elementary schools, and we recommended I teach to him. And I was so impressed that he emailed me back, and he said, well, this is really what I want to do. He's a career switcher. I want to get my master's in this. And I said, absolutely. I think that is wonderful. However, I still recommend I teach because you can do it quicker 
and more affordable to you and up to 12 credits transfer into a master's degree program. So I teach is still the best way to go and then he can still pursue his master's if he would like to have that because this is not a master's degree but it can become that. It's $3,050. So if you have to take six classes at a university, multiply that by each credit that that costs, $3,000 is quite a deal to get your teaching license. We're also allowing tuition reimbursement. So we have an allotment for our teachers to use tuition reimbursement. We're allowing our teachers to use that for iTeach. So really, our tuition reimbursement is $3,000. They can get their teaching license for $50. That three thousand, we we could probably throw in the fifty dollars, but I'll have to ask Dr. Stanley that <laughs> later. This year, we also offered we had grant money in our Title II grant. We had a little bit of an allotment left, um, or it was extra that we got. We found out after Lee and Mason wrote the grant, and we had some money left over. So we decided we have great paraprofessionals, paraprofessionals in our buildings that have a four-year degree. They want to be teachers. They're doing a lot of the work. So what a deal to be able to go get your teaching license when you have your bachelor's for $3,000. So four of our um, paraprofessionals signed up for iTeach. Um, and actually, we've already hired two of them. So of that four, two of them have a job for next year. And they've been paraprofessionals for us. Right now, we have 18 iTeach participants. I'm really excited to have someone finish. So they've been working on the program since the fall. So we want to have a completer and be able to celebrate that. Any questions about the stuff that I went over, iTeach, or our mentoring program? Induct yep, go ahead. What, what is our realistic expectation for our teachers to get licensed? What do you mean? Time Can you explain frame, more? Time frame. Oh, so I teach. It, they well, even with or without I teach. What, so, what, what do, if a teacher is hired on a provisional license, they have three years to complete the requirements. That being said, we can offer extensions and do those types of things. Um, so that gives them three years to take all of those college courses if that's the route they choose to do. I teach, they say, um, you can do within a school year. However, people have completed it quicker than that. I teach has told us that. We haven't had a completer yet, but the earliest someone signed up for us, we just got approved in August, had some presentations in the fall. So I believe our first participant started in October. So we're hoping to have some done by the end of the school year. I, I appreciate how, how in, you know, from your description, how intentional this is, yes. and um, and I, I appreciate that. So yeah, I'm glad that we're glad we're models for the other counties around us yes. now. It's like, it's very different. Like and the other thing that um, we're do, we have been doing this year, we've been to some conferences, them more than me, but really collaborating with other uh, school divisions in Virginia. How do you do these things? And it's not just Campbell County that's struggling with our second year support. That's across the board. So that's something we want to get ahead of. We want to yeah. do better than other places and provide support to not just our first year teachers because we, we can get them through their first year with a lot of support. But like they said earlier, we can't just dump them off into year two and think, okay, we taught it all to you in one year. You know, it takes a little bit of time to perfect the craft of teaching. It's never perfect, but to get better at it. Briefly, share with us the relationship between you and the administrators in the school. Like, who who calls the shots? Or says, yeah, yeah. So you, you want to? The principals, the principals call the shots. Yeah, I, uh, I was getting ready to answer. Principals call the yeah. shots. However, yeah, they they point us in the direction and we go. And so, I mean, we have an out idea of who we're going to be working with just based on who's new. Um, but we do our best, and that's an area that we're still working on improving. Um, but we do our best to to collaborate and go where the principals are identifying need. Yeah. If a teacher taught here ten years ago and came back to Campbell County, would they go through your program? Just to learn everything new that's changed over yes, the years. Right. Okay, thank you. Anything else? It's a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're thank welcome. You. Please join us at any of our orientations, cruising a success week, any and of if, our. If you want to peruse any of these resources, we'll just let us know. We can send them to you. Please. You can tell that Mark and Paul exude positivity <laughs> and, and yeah. teach us hard, mm -hmm. and that's appreciated. Thank you. So I, I, 
they're, li they're a little subdued tonight. So this is actually you get more of the, the pirate and the captain and all of that fun stuff. Like I said, adult learners like that stuff too. So um, they did a very nice presentation tonight. But please come to some of their other presentations to see the fun stuff that we do. Thank you. They're, they're more fun than me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item is matters from the floor. So I have a list of five speakers and just just brief instructions. When you when I call your name, come to the podium, share with the board your name and address, and you can speak to us. And in three minutes, a buzzer will go off. And please try to cut it down after three minutes. That's pretty much the instruction. So the first person to speak, and, and if I say these names wrong, I apologize. Karen Angelo. A-N-G-U-L-O. Karen Angelo. Not here. Jenny Etzminger. Hi, my name is Jenny Insminger, and my address is 326 Royal Court. It's technically Forest, but it is still Campbell County. <laughs> I think there are about five homes that are like that. All right, so just start whenever. Just go. Um, my name is Jenny Insminger, and I'm a current resident of Campbell County with two children in the Brookville School District. My daughter has been dedicated to theater since her first preschool play. And our family actually moved from Bedford County to Campbell County because she was so involved in the elementary kids camps. And we wanted to be in a school system that really prioritized um, the benefits of drama and education. While we have enjoyed being in Campbell County and still do, I do see where the drama department can be more focused um, and improved. So we would like to request that the school board allow the Brookville Middle School in a full-time or part-time theater teacher to facilitate the growing desire of our kids in the performing arts and a second dedicated theater teacher to focus on technical theater in the high school so our middle and high school students can be afforded more opportunities to perform and also to create behind the scenes. With our county's comprehensive plan, it states that we will develop an inter interdisciplinary curriculum in elementary that integrates all areas including character education as well as critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, and citizenship, design elective courses and middle school exploratory programs to align with career pathways and profile to a graduate, reconnect the school community by engaging in positive social interactions between schools, students, and parents, and develop a school-based events to connect the parents. Theater will help advance all of these points. According to the American Alliance of Theater and Education, numerous studies have demonstrated a correlation between drama involvement and academic achievement. In addition to having higher standardized test scores than their peers who do not experience the performing arts, students who participate in drama often experience improved reading comprehension, maintain better attendance records, and stay generally more engaged in school than their non-arts counterparts. The College Entrance Examination Board reported that from 2004 to 2011, students involved in drama performance scored an average of 65.5 points higher on the verbal components and 35.5 points higher in the math component on SATs. According to the Arts Education Partnership, limiting theater opportunities to after-school participation can create barriers to access for students from lower income families who are more likely to have limited access to transportation and competing demands with employment and child care responsibilities. It's not just my belief that theater classes have a positive behavioral and educational impact on our children. It is proven. Thank you. Brittany Rhodes. Hi, Brittany Rhodes, 168 Berkeley Lane in Evington. I'll go ahead and start. First, I wanted to thank you for allowing me the chance to address you. I come to you with 
My concerns for the future of Brookville Theater as a concerned parent of an active participant in this program. A little background on my child. She's been in this program since she was in the third grade and is currently a freshman at Brookville and has been involved in a number of shows. Theater has impacted her life tremendously. It has given her confidence, it's boosted her self-esteem, it's given her a voice and allowed her to be anyone she wants to be, especially when she's in character. To address some of my concerns, Brookville had two theater instructors to assist with the development of the evolving program. And now we are being informed that there's only need for one, one teacher to teach advanced acting and technical theater. In the winter, Brookville presented the show, Bring It On the Musical. There were at least 15 or more students who have never been involved with the theater program that were given an opportunity to be in that show. By reducing that need to one teacher, students are losing the instruction of a licensed trained teacher and are at risk of being denied the chance to be in a theater class because the classroom has filled up. We have had the luxury of having Mrs. Emanuel evolve this program for over 17 years, and with that evolution, it has now become greater than one person can handle. The elementary and middle schools are now out of a director, and the high school doesn't have additional assistance or instruction that is needed for the kids to flourish. The resolution we're given is that limit yourself or cut back. Theater at Brookville is self-funded, and those funds that we receive pays for copyrights, pays for the playbooks, pays for costumes, and even more. Without that funding or additional help, we're putting our students in a box. This program needs your support and the support of having an additional instructor. To provide you with some statistics, in 2015, students who took four years of fine arts classes in high school scored an average of 92 points higher on their SATs, and that was from the College Board of 2016. 89% of surveyed business executives participated in the arts during their school careers. That came from unmasking business success in 2015. Applied theater techniques in the classroom increased students' self-esteem and developed their ability to empathize with others. That came from the Creative Research Journal in 2020. In closing, I ask that you please hear us out and see what our children and the students involved in this program need. And that is a licensed trained instructor to teach theater in the middle school and technical theater one and two in the high school. The program is going and continues to grow. Our elementary summer camp had to be extended to two weeks because 150 campers signed up and showed interest. And that need is continuing to get their knowledge and education from middle school and transition to the high school. Thank you. Thank you. Arabella Etzminger. Hello, I'm Arabella Ensminger and I live at three, uh, 326 Royal Court. Good evening, my name is Arabella Ensminger and I'm a seventh grader at Brookville Middle School. I have been doing theater since I was four years old and it has helped me become confident. It has given me friendships I wouldn't trade for the world. It has helped me connect with others and become a better person overall. I know it might seem like I'm just some random kid saying random stuff, but if you ask any kid who has done theater, they will tell you that the atmosphere is so positive. The reason we need to, to keep this theater program isn't only because it's fun and everyone is nice, it's also because it's educational. I know of so many kids who want to become, become actors when they grow up that are phenomenal and can't afford to have a three year dead period of not being able to improve while other kids are. It will, it will only set them back. Not only does theater teach you acting, singing, and dancing, it also teaches life skills, such as public speaking, being able to work with others, confidence, time management, adaptability, creativity, problem solving, commitment, discipline, and so many more. The truth is, if you choose to save this program, you will be helping thousands of kids that will be going through this program as they grow up. Thank you for your time. Amy Ferguson. Hey, good evening. I'm Amy Ferguson. I live at 166 Deborah Drive. Um, I'll start whenever y'all are ready. Oh, okay. 
Uh, good evening, my name is Amy Woody Ferguson. I'm a Brookville graduate from the class of 2003, as well as a parent of three daughters in the Brookville school community in the elementary, middle, and high school levels. One of my daughters is an athlete at Brookville Middle, and the other two are amazing theater students in the elementary and high school levels. Brookville is rich with tradition, and there is a heartfelt pride that comes with being a bee and representing that maroon and gold. And I think it's really important that every student that walks through the doors of their schools have the opportunity to make that mean something more to them. My brother was an athlete at Brookville. Uh, he excelled in three sports. His skills were based on Brookville's foundation, starting at five years old. He had so many special moments and that contributed to the quality of his life and added to the tradition of our school. I was able to be a part of a lot of those from the stands. Um, however, I was a theater student without a program because 30 years ago, this program just didn't exist. Um, my brother's high school experiences were a lot different than mine. So while I didn't have a program then to be a part of, it was very encouraging uh, to see that Megan Emanuel not only created this successful theater program, but more importantly, she created these opportunities for these kids to um, for a more inclusive and dynamic group of students to contribute to that pride and tradition that Brookville cares so much about. Um, but as the program grew, so did the workload. And thankfully, a couple of years ago, a new hire at BHS allowed more growth for the program that greatly benefited our theater students, especially at those younger levels. This individual, unfortunately, has not been invited back to, to Brookville next year. And our program will no longer have the appropriate resources to maintain the level of outreach they've achieved. Theater is 100% self-funded. A significant contribution to our funding is the theater camps for students ages K through five. They work with roughly 100 students per camp and the waiting list is just as long to get into those. Our middle school students have been able to put on great productions and our high schoolers are able to serve those theater camps and our middle school productions, teaching valuable lessons in leadership and teamwork while also raising uh, recognition through their own performances and competitions. Uh, there are trophies and ribbons and achievements proudly earned by our theater students, putting them in positions where they feel important and they feel like they matter. Ms. Emanuel has, out, has grown and developed this program and now it's in jeopardy of having to take some steps backwards because valuable resources have been eliminated. We need this additional position to serve high school and middle school students, maintain the progression of their opportunities, and to secure the funds we acquire to keep moving forward. It would be a disservice to our kids in theater not to have that additional support. Our students deserve the opportunity to contribute to our rich tradition, and they deserve to feel a sense of belonging where they can represent that maroon and gold. Thank you. All right, thank you all for coming out and speaking. Um, Mr. Jones has asked me to comment just briefly on, on the status of the Brookville High School Theater Program, and obviously it's a fantastic program, and we're certainly proud of all the hard work that goes into it and all the kids that participate in it. Um, this year, I think Ms. White expressed a need to have, she had a teacher who I believe I'm right, taught two sections of art, one section of technical theater, and she needed a, an additional art. She needed that third person to be full-time art, um, but would like to have a part-time theater person to pick up the, the classes outside of art that we have currently. So you'll see in our budget a little bit later, we have a part-time theater position in there, which should allow for two sections of theater to be taught, which would be plus one section. So we recognize the fact that theater is so important to the Brookville community and just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay? So, thank you. Okay. And I'll call on a couple of our older members that have been here for a while. I remember several, many years ago, something happened that stirred up the Beehive Theater Department at Brookville, and we had a gathering this size or maybe more and the one i don't you remember what it was about gary or john hardy you remember what it was about okay anyway that doesn't make any difference but but when when arabella went to the microphone and started speaking 
it flashed back through my mind that all of those student speakers that spoke that night were like professional speakers, and that was from the acting and theater department, the skills that they had learned. And it's truly impressive. Uh, and just, just when you started speaking, it clicks. And I mean, you can say what you want about the theater or the drama department, but it, but it teaches you how to, you know, get your message across in a very understandable way. So we appreciate all you all do, and we'll do what we can. Thank you all for coming. And you're you're free to free to leave if you want to. You're more than welcome to stay, but you're you're free to leave. Uh, anybody got anything else to add? If not, next order we got a couple of them leaving. <laughs> next order of business is approval of the February twelfth meeting minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. A motion by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Maddox, that we approve the February 12th meeting minutes. Any questions? Discussion? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Payment of bills. Mr. Chairman, I reviewed the bills and moved to approve payment. Pay a second? Second. Uh, motion by Dr. Miller, seconded by Ms. Vaughn that we pay the bills. Does anybody have any questions? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Ms. McClanahan, donations. Tonight you have a list of donations that were presented. Unless you have any questions on those, I ask that you approve them. Make a motion? Um, yeah, I have yeah. a question. <laughs> all right. Could somebody elaborate on the grant? Liberty, what that grant is. Mm -hmm. I, I can speak to that. Okay. Um, and so I was um, actually met with Ms. Thomas. Um, they had met um, with Liberty. Liberty has received grants that need to be used, and it's supposed to be used as a result of their conference play for football. It's from Conference um, USA. For Conference USA. Correct. And they have been um, really looking to how to support um, schools and had a partnership that came up with Alta Vista, and so would allow for training, um, as well as professional development and classroom supply needs um, at Alta Vista. Um, and so it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity that at first almost seemed too good to be true, um, but it is a chance um, for them to be able to, to donate, and they would take care of the financial components, um, and they really just want to help support our students and the idea is with conscious um, discipline. It's conscious classrooms. And so it's all about how do we help elementary students really be regulated? How do we help our teachers support that as well? Anything else you want to add, Ms. Thomas? Um, the goal of Conference USA was to address student athletes at mm -hmm. college level with their mental health issues. And so they realized that had to be done by starting at the elementary level. Yeah. And we see that every day. So that is the goal yes. of our elementary students with mental health issues they may be facing. Um, two years ago, we implemented conscious discipline. And so we really want to continue with that conscious discipline journey. Um, we'd like to create some calm down corners in each classroom. And so the funding, of, as Ms. Gell said, would go towards training and those um, classroom supplies. So, so this is money that Liberty got from being in the football conference, Correct. and now they want to pass it on to the community. Correct. And there's potential for this to maybe be um, not just a one-time event. We could be eligible for the next couple of years for $10,000 mm -hmm. each year to continue with our, our mission. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then how is this going to be monitored? or? Um, so Ms. Thomas will be, I mean, that they'll be working with that faculty, but as far as the financial components, that is that's why it's a donation. So, so Liberty is just giving us money. They're not providing any oversight or? No, the oversight correct. would be at the school building site. Okay, correct. Okay. Um, that, yes. They basically gave the money to Liberty so the students could use that money to go out into the community and serve. Mm -hmm. yes. So the, the ultimate money was granted by Conference USA, but it went to Liberty University. So they're the stewards of the money who then are are looking to use it locally. Okay. Okay. We 
you just in the right spot at the right time, or? It helps to know the right people. You gotta connect, yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yep. I was gonna ask, is this specific to Alta Vista Elementary because of the Conscious Discipline Program, or is it an opportunity to spread this to other Campbell County elementary schools? Or? Well, we see this as a great partnership to start, and I think it'll be, we'll have to see. You know, so we're excited. They have a plan. They have goals already in mind of already doing this work. So we're excited to see what might, you know, what can be transferred down the road. And we definitely talk about partnering with other schools and bringing them on board for training so they can start implementing it in their schools if they're, they're also interested. Thank you. Any more questions? Did we make a motion or we just had questions? We just had questions. I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Okay. Second. Motion by Mr. Maddox, seconded by Dr. Miller. That we approve these donations. Any more questions? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <coughs> uh, non resident tuition, Ms. McClanahan. Tonight you have a list of students listed for approval as non-resident tuition students. Unless you have any questions, I ask that you approve it as presented. A motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Ms. Tanner, that we approve the non-resident tuition. Any questions on that? <coughs> if none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Consideration of requests for supplemental appropriations. Ms. McClanahan. Tonight you have four supplemental appropriations for approval. Unless you have any questions, I ask that you approve them. Okay, motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ms. Tanner, second by Ms. Vaughn. Any questions? Michelle, I was trying to hear all these additional funding this time. I've glanced over were there any reductions or no, they're all additions. Additional funding, okay. Okay. Yeah, this, the, most of them are federal and they're just tweaking the numbers. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Personnel report, Ms. Hundley. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, we're at our time in personnel. Well, we're a little bit busy, so we are still closing out, hiring, and finishing the 23-24 school year, and to give you an update on that. Um, aside from those positions I've been mentioning all year where we have chosen not to fill those because we've been able to absorb with some electives and things like that, we only have one teaching position open right now that we hope to be able to fill, um, but if not, the school's making do as they can. Going into next year, um, the personnel report will continue to be a little bit lengthy, um, but for the 24-25 school year, we have had so far about 56 openings for next year, and we've already filled 32 of them. So our principals are doing an excellent job of hiring the best of the best early. Um, so I'm really proud of them for that. Uh, Dr. Anello let me know that he is still short. You guys know that's gonna be an ongoing thing. Um, about 10 total full-time, part-time, um, folks in the transportation department. He did hire two um, aides from the career fair, so after those contacts, he was able to bring those in and get those hired, and he does plan for a CDL class to start right after spring break. So, unless you have any questions for me, I'd ask that you approve the report as written. And repeat again, how many you pulled in from the career fair? So it was 16 total hires. 10 of those are teaching positions for next school year. Six were classified, two for Dr. Ranella, and then four for school nutrition. She was able to hire several subs, and usually the way Ms. Heiner does her hires, starts them as subs to make sure that it's the right fit in different buildings, and then she contracts them. If you got any, uh, how many are career switchers versus coming from another? I can get you that information. I don't know that off the top of my head, but it is mostly right now, we have hired mostly folks with experience. Um, we have hired some superstar of our student teachers. Um, you know, we have a lot in our buildings right now, so we've hired several zero year teachers, but mostly teachers with experience from surrounding counties. Good. 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 All right, entertain a motion. Move to approve. I second. 
Motion by Dr. Miller, seconded by Mr. Phillips, that we approve the personnel report. Anybody got any more questions? I did want to mention, if you don't mind, um, Brian Wilson was just on the board report that you approved. He is going to be replacing Mr. Sisk, but not yet. <laughs> Mr. Sisk has a couple more months with us, but uh, Brian is going to be joining us happily in July. We're really excited to have him as our new Director of Student Services. Yeah. Well, welcome aboard. Thanks. All, right, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye, right, Mr. Sis. Good evening. My name's Ron Wilson. <laughs> 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 no, to, uh, tonight I have one uh, policy to bring before you, JECA, for a second reading and uh, a vote. <laughs> if there are no questions. How? Just, how? Uh, how much does this impact us? The change? Well, just the, the homeless, transient, living out in their cars, and then provide transportation for that. I mean. It keeps us hopping sometimes. Um, it, it comes and goes in waves. Sometimes during the, um, uh, we find that during the holidays, uh, sometimes that it goes up. But we've always been able to find a way to get them to us. So it's, it's not, there's, the change in this really makes no difference to what we're already doing. Um, but I don't know of our homeless numbers right off the top of my head right now, but they, they waver up and down. So before there was a little bit of leeway if it was unreasonable, at least the way the policy was written, is if it was unreasonable. Yeah, that policy was written quite a while back. And that so now is, we have to provide transportation regardless. We do. And uh, we'll often utilize, uh, if a student moves away from us a long distance, we'll work with that school division and the parents because no one, uh, usually including the kids, wants to be transported for, right. for long, long distances. It's just, not, it's just not useful. But sometimes to finish out a year, uh, we'll do that uh, because we do want consistency. Those kids are in the toughest spot there is, sure. and we want that consistency to get them through the year. And, uh, We've been able to we've been able to manage it. Uh, Mr. Abbott does a great job uh, working with transportation. He lives up at transportation, working through these intricacies. And thanks to um, uh, Kristen and um, the transportation department, they've been able to make it work. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion to approve policy update. Second. Motion by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Ms. Tanner, that we approve the revised policy. Any more questions? If none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Religious exemptions. Mr. Sisk. We have one family tonight who has um, asked for religious exemption. If there are any questions, I recommend that approval. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Maddox, seconded by Dr. Miller, that we approve the religious exemptions. Anybody have any questions? If none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Calendar change. Dr. Stanley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would, uh, I'm thankful for the fact that we've not had any snow this year and we've not had to miss much school. Um, and a lot of times, when that happens, we will consider adding a work day in the spring um, for teachers. Um, and I would I'm come to you tonight to ask that you consider making April 8th a teacher work day. The 8th is the day following spring break. So what it would do is it would extend spring break for our students one more day. Get, um, the nine weeks ends right before spring break. So when we come back, if we have a work day, that will give teachers to kind of plan out the final nine weeks. It'll also give us an opportunity to look at some uh, resources that we're considering for the Literacy Act, and, and we could certainly use that time uh, and benefit from it. So I'd ask your consideration to make April 8th a teacher work day. Motion to approve. Second. Nobody eager to jump in there on that right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no-brainer. <laughs> that's, that's the number one call I get. That's right. <laughs> I think probably you guys felt it was more beneficial to have the teacher work day as opposed to the teacher day off. We do. We do. You had yeah. material and things you need to cover on that day. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So I had a motion by Ms. Parker, a second by Ms. Tanner that we 
approve the minor adjustment to the school calendar. Anybody have any more questions or comments? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I see some happy kids. I know, it's the smiles out there. <laughs> They're thrilled. <laughs> Teachers, not so much. I'm not sure about the parents. Parents, probably not so much. <laughs> Everybody should be happy. The teachers don't have the kids, and the, and the kids don't have the teachers. So we're all good. <clears throat> all right, Dr. Stanley, budget time. Uh, yes, um, tonight you have a copy of our 2024 25 proposed budget. Michelle's worked mighty hard to put that together. Um, Tonight, I'll go over some of the highlights of that of that budget. Um, as you know, the governor um, passed a budget um, so many weeks back that pretty much allowed for a 1% bonus and, and a budget that gave us approximately $70 million. And then just this past weekend, the House and Senate reached a compromise um, in, in their budget. Um, they are suggesting that we, Campbell County, would get 75 million dollars so so when we look at the budgets originally when we looked at the governor's budget the house budget the senate budget we tried to be very conservative um, because we just really don't know until mid-april what's gonna you know come our way um, so we're basing our budget on um, 71 million four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars five hundred and fifty four dollars um, and and in that budget we are proposing a three percent raise for all employees in that budget, we've accounted for a 10% health insurance increase. We've accounted for a 10% property and auto liability insurance increase. We've allowed for a 5% increase in fuel, 20% increase in utilities. And then we've also got some personnel additions we would like for you to consider. Um, out of those um, additions, we have four reading intervention specialists that we at one time hired with CARES money. Um, and this is for our middle schools. Uh, we felt that literacy obviously is the most important thing that we do. And it shouldn't just stop, uh, obviously it doesn't, but we need to continue to make sure that students in middle school are receiving the same attention they got in elementary school. So we're looking to pick that up on our, on our local budget, but it's also going to be part of the Virginia Literacy Act. So in some ways we're gonna be required to do it. Um, in the budget that's being proposed by the, the legislature, there's also a difference uh, in staffing ratios for uh, ESL teachers and, and students. So we are proposing that we add one ESL teacher slash coordinator. Um, that number now has grown to include 230 kids and at 15 schools. So we're gonna look at using this person as a teacher part of the day and also being a coordinator for the other part of the day. Unless our numbers change and fluctuate, then it'll be a full-time teacher. That's coming out of the state funding. Correct. That'll be coming out of the state budget. Um, we're looking at one speech therapist. That'll be coming uh, out of federal money. And in the past, we have contracted those services. We think that if we add a position and then we start using Medicaid billing, we'll be better off. So that's something that was proposed to us by the Special Ed Department, Dr. Pontius, um, Dr. McCormick, and we think it's a good idea. But we have to hire the person up front. Um, we're looking at adding a Title I coordinator at our federal funds, one social worker, and the reason for the social worker is we have a school-based mental health grant, as you all know, that we've, we've contracted with Harvest, and part of that grant is a movement on our part to be self-sufficient and build our capacity to handle issues related to mental health for when the grant goes away. And so we feel like this position here is a incremental step in doing that. You can see we've got one theater teacher part-time at Brookville High School. We're asking for one pre-K behavior coach. This is a position that we had during uh, CARES, um, during COVID, and we felt like it was uh, uh, much needed and something that we want to continue doing using uh, VPI funds. Another position that I think falls into that same category is a nurse coordinator. 
During COVID, we hired a nurse coordinator that's somebody that works under Mr. Sisk and oversees all of our nurses. I think last year, based on, on his estimates, we had about 30,000 cases of kids coming to the uh, nurse's office, and some of these medical conditions are, are very severe. A nurse coordinator would allow us to have somebody on call if a nurse could not be in school that particular day, but also to help support nurses with their work. Well, just to be yes, sure sir. I'm straight, the theater position is in addition, that's an additional part-time position because we So they have one full-time position. Right. And then this uh, would be in addition to that one, so they will have one and a half at the high school. Okay. Yeah. And that's replacing what they had in the past was a teacher that taught, um, correct me if I'm wrong, two sections of art, one section of technical theater. So now this person would be able to teach two sections of theater, so. Yeah, and then you'd have full-time art. And then we have yeah. a full-time okay. art, correct. So in saying that, you know, I, again, that's, that's a conservative number. It also includes $550,000 that we were given to the, um, from the county um, as them picking up their share of our 3% budget. So we're much appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. 230 kids in ESL now? Correct, yes, sir. Is that divided up pretty equally amongst the schools? Or? No, sir, that's prim it's primarily in the Brookville area. At Tomahawk, Leesville Road, Brookville Middle, Brookville High. And so how many ESL teachers do we have right now? Seven. And are any of them in a position to be the uh, coordinator? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. As, long, as long as between now and the beginning of the school year, those numbers don't increase to a point where we have to make them a full-time teacher. And if that does happen, then we'll, we'll come back to you and possibly amend the budget. So, just help. We're going to hire another teacher, but we may use one of our current teachers to become the coordinator? Correct. Okay. Right. Correct. Okay. In terms of VRS rates, Virginia Retirement System, um, there are no, there's no change there. Again, we are considering or budgeting for a 10% increase in health insurance. Um, last year, our health insurance cost exceeded 10%, so we're hoping that won't be the case this year. Um, so, but obviously we budgeted it for a 10% increase there. In terms of aid, uh -huh. No increase, the employees will stay the same? Uh, it depends on how much the increase is. If it exceeds 10%, then we would have to look at passing that on. Okay. Um, some of that to our employees, yes. Okay. Hopefully not, but. Okay. In terms of ADM, that, that's kind of a driving factor in our, in our funding. Um, you can see I've got DOE projections. We've got our own Campbell County projections. And then you can see the actual fall membership and the spring projected ADM. Um, the numbers that we've used basically in our budget uh, are, the, are the ones at the top from the DOE. Uh, we anticipate having 7,482 students for the upcoming school year. just a general overview of where our budget uh, revenues come from. You can see about 65, 66% of our, our funds come from the state, and that's the 71 million that we've just referenced. Our county gives us about 28% of our budget. Federal's 5.7, and then other local is 0.3%. Uh, so our proposed budget next year, our revenues are $107,384,000. I'm uh, sorry, $384,189. Here's another way of looking at that uh, breakdown in terms of revenues. And then this is just really an overview of how we spend our money, okay? You can see that close to 70% goes into instruction, which includes our people, which includes all of our personnel, our teachers, our aides, um, our classified employees. Then we've got our federal programs. About 5%, 6% goes into administration, um, pupil transportation, about 6%, close to 10% to operations and maintenance. 
and close to 5% of the technology. Again, just another way of looking at our expenditures. We've included for you the school nutrition budget. And when you're looking at that on one page, you'll see revenues. On the other page, you'll see expenditures. Um, you can see in terms of revenues what the breakdown looks like for school nutrition and then what those expenditures look like. And you can see that that's balanced. And then you also see our budget timeline. So tonight's your first look at our budget proposal. Uh, in two weeks, we're scheduled on March 25th uh, to reconvene for approval of the budget. And then our county will be adopting their budget uh, in April. And then, depending on what we get from the state in April, when they finalize their budget, we might have to come back with an amendment to, to make some changes, hopefully additions. <laughs> So, if you got any questions, I'll be certainly glad to answer them. If you have any questions between now and our next meeting, feel free, Michelle and I are both available to you to, to help you uh, any way possible. But we feel like we've got a pretty good budget here. We've got some much needed um, positions that we feel like we need to, uh, we need to bring on. Uh, some of them are required, um, so we really don't have a choice. Um, and then we've still got uh, uh, allowed for a 3% increase for our teachers and classified staff. So we're excited about that. One thing that sticks out on the front page, a 20% increase in utilities. Okay. I know what it costs at my house. Is that going to be an ongoing year after year, 20% bump? That's, you probably can tell, you know, speak to what it's traditionally been, but, you know, the prices continue to go up. We didn't budget any increase for the current school year, so um, I think 23 we may have had a slight budget increase, mm -hmm. nothing for 24, so we're going to estimate high for 25. Right. Now the 10% in property and auto liability, is that due to claims or is that just insurance in general? Uh, some of it's claims, but bulk of it was last year we were required to reassess all our building values mm -hmm. and they went up significantly and of course that has made the premium made go up, up quite a bit. Because hmm. all these buildings are antiques. <laughs> the replacement cost isn't. Oh yeah, that's the right. reassessment is not. I live in old house, I know, yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any more questions for Michelle or Dr. Stanley? <coughs> well, again, if you do, don't hesitate. Reach out. Take a couple. Even so look it over. And if you have any questions, call Michelle or Dr. Stanley. And we'll get back here on what, March 25th and yeah. approve it. That's right. Michelle, did you knock us out last Friday? Yeah. <laughs> You got anything else? Um, I've got one more thing for you, and that's uh, just a reminder that Wednesday night, um, VSBA Southern Region uh, Spring Forum is going to be hosted at Appomattox and uh, at the high school. At the high school, that's right. And I think we've all signed up to be there. Five o'clock. We've got some artwork that will be displaying from Campbell County students, and uh, we'll also be doing tabletop presentations. Superintendents throughout the region will be doing. Uh, these presentations and people will rotate table to table and we will be presenting on our teacher learning academy. Good. So, oh, good. awesome. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good thing. Hello? Yes, sir. Mr. Maddox, got anything for the board? Uh, a couple things. Uh, Elementary School Celebrated Kindness Week partnering with Joe Bean's Pizza Pie Main Street Cafe and the APD to encourage kindness throughout the community. And I'm assuming that was done with gift cards. Didn't y'all raise a little money? And yeah, that's kind of our school guidance council is coordinating all that with community businesses. And um, we also raised a free coffee group just to encourage people to come and help. Um, when they wanted it that week. And also our students wrote kindness notes and they uh, piece of pie stuff them on the end of the week. 
Yeah, yeah. with the pizza box. So everybody who ordered pizza in the community got condensated And we participated in, or, or had participated in Read Across America with activities including the athletes from the high school came and read to the kids. And uh, I'd like to thank Liberty for that grant and it will be well spent. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Phillips. Yeah, thanks to Paul and Mark. Are you guys still here? No, no, no. 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 Okay, well, I'll take that back. No, I'm <laughs> no, thanks for all they do. That was a good presentation tonight. Um, we have a mentoring ship, mentorship program where I'm employed at, and uh, it's a big benefit to employees as they come in and get uh, ramped up mm -hmm. and know what they're doing as they move forward. So thanks for their efforts there and for the administration for supporting that. Um, at Yellow Branch, they also kicked off the Reading Across America Week. Um, had some LU students come out to visit and read to the classrooms. Um, they're having a book fair this week and first graders are showing off some art skills on Tuesday, uh, March 12th tomorrow at 6 p.m. so go out and check that out if you have time and um, they're also hosting a uh, title one parent engagement event on April the 11th from 5 to 7 um, at the high school uh, boys varsity basketball team had a good year uh, went to the regional semifinals um, had a record of 19 and 4 uh, overall so great effort by those guys. Um, also the track, boys track finished second at the Virginia High School League indoor track meet with Elijah Sherrard winning state championship and the four by two relay team also won the state championship. So um, Keith not quite as good as what we ran, I'm sure, but uh, no, great, great job by the track athletes for um, all of their accomplishments this year. Um, and we're having a spring musical Curtains, the musical, will be March 22nd through the 24th. I'm sure they won't compete with the Brookville program, but um, <laughs> now they do a great job there too. And uh, thanks for the Brookville folks for coming out tonight and expressing your concerns for the theater program as well. Um, appreciate that. And lastly, Rustburg Middle School, uh, they had 11 winners out of 25 spots at the district level for the Young Writers Contest, so great job by those students. And they also had a great turnout for the February Family Partnership Night, um, where they celebrated uh, reading books, brownies, and bingo. So, um, that's all I had. I also wanted to echo uh, his sentiments about you guys coming out and speaking. Thank you for coming out, and I uh, enjoyed listening to you. Um, I wanted to thank all the donors and thank you LU for the extra yard uh, a donation. Um, I think that is absolutely fantastic. I'd lo love to hear about it. I want to hear more about the conscious, uh, uh, what is it, discipline? Yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. Um, thank you to the Flames football team and Coach Chadwell for coming out to Leesville Road. They helped unload kids in the car rider line and they went inside and the kids got to ask questions. It was so funny pulling up to the car rider line. I'm like, who are all these people wearing red jerseys? Is it Rustburg? And then I realized that it was it was Liberty Flames. And my son was like, Mom, who is this? <laughs> and I was like, those are Liberty Flames football players. And he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> and so he gets out of the car, and I just hear them hyping him up. And he gets multiple high fives. And it was really cool to see yeah, nice. the kids mm -hmm. get excited and have it that cut piece of our community and the kids in our community, it really, it just made their day. So I loved, I loved seeing that. <clears throat> Congratulations to Matthew Meeker, a junior at BHS for his William and Mary Leadership Award. And congratulations to Dan Washburn, Washburn for being voted as a Lynchburg Living Top Teacher. And tomorrow BHS is having an open house and that includes rising ninth graders, so I encourage you guys all to go out and meet your teachers. And then College and Career Day at the Tech Center um, is on Thursday, March 21st. That's all I got. Mr. Parker. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
jump down to the end. Um, so I'm going to uh, pick up on the Brookville High School announcements, and I appreciate it. It kind of worked out for a reason. So I get to congratulate my neighbor, Chase and Hunt, who uh, is a recent graduate of Brookville High School. And he's just, if anybody knows Chasen, he's knocking it out of the park. Um, he is a long distance runner. Um, I think pretty much every outdoor track event uh, Chasen has won um, and broken records at the University of Lynchburg. It says, I'm gonna make sure I say it right, um, the mile leg on the distance medley relay Friday night and they won the title and Chasen placed fifth in the 3K on Saturday and is an All-American runner for Uni University of Lynchburg. So that's super cool, appreciate him for doing that. I wanna say what a great job, Miss Arabella. I missed her, I'll call her mom tomorrow. I haven't seen Jenny forever, but Arabella did amazing and thank you to everybody for speaking. For those of you who don't know, my youngest are 18 and 20 now and they were in the very first um, Jungle Book that Miss Emanuel did way back in the day. And it really, I mean, it was just amazing for my children. And we do really appreciate the theater program. And, um, and Man Newsies was probably my favorite so far. That thing was incredible. Um, I did want to also thank Miss Tanner for bringing in and for the parents who have not yet attended, please reach out. I believe Thursday is at William Campbell and then we still have upcoming at Alta Vista High and Brookville High for parents only to um, view, is it called Right Before Your Eyes? Mm -hmm. It's just Alta Vista. Okay. Left. Wayne okay. Campbell and Alta Vista. Alta Vista left. Wayne and Campbell. I attended the Rustburg. Um, Mr. Phillips also was there at the Rustburg event. And it, it sparked a lot of conversations from the people in attendance um, and brought awareness okay of all the things that we're shown here at this table, there were more things shown that night that I had no idea. So um, it was fabulous for awareness for parents and grandparents to make sure their kids um, you know, are getting any extra attention that they might need if they're struggling in different ways. So I highly recommend that. So thank you, Ms. Tanner, for Virginia Cooperative Extension bringing that program to our schools. And I think that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Miller. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Um, you know, most of what we do is sort of boring, but we really do appreciate when county citizens come and, and um, regardless of whether you have concerns or not, you're always welcome. And so we appreciate you being here. And obviously, um, I hope we've addressed your concerns in our budget with, with hiring a, a teacher. So, um, also, Ms. Hunley and Thank you for presenting your um, mentoring. I got to see those guys at Brook Neal and um, very engaging. I, I imagine they do an excellent job, just their personalities. Um, and so I, I think we're really privileged to have such a proactive mentoring. And I hope it really trickles down that the teachers really appreciate it. Um, you know, mentoring, everybody wants to get paid, but Everybody also wants to feel important and feel like they're they're growing and getting help. So I, I think I think you guys are doing a good job. So I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Bennett shared with me that um, Brooke Neal had their uh, spring dance, a sneaker ball, which <laughs> evidently is semi-formal, but you wear sneakers. And they had over 400 attend. And it was, um, That's great. Well, well done and well received at Glendale Main. I wanted to wear that. Huh? What's <laughs> did They had them at Glendale Manor. It's uh, like a marriage wedding baby. Yeah. yeah. She's really good. <laughs> 400. 400, yeah. That's pretty That's cool. a lot of people. That's <laughs> all in sneakers. In sneakers. <laughs> yeah. And he's very happy with his three new hires. And um, he shared, and I think it's because he's world, the world-renowned principal, uh, he had to turn away. He had to turn away prospective awesome. teachers who wanted to come to Brook Neal and teach. So that's that's a good problem to have. <laughs> well, enjoy it while you can. All right. And um, <laughs> William Campbell had an open house last week with a good turnout. Uh, Miss Hansen went to Randolph Macon in Ashville, Ashland with Laney Patrick for an AP seminar training. 
and um, to learn different ways, opportunities to enhance instruction for our accelerated and gifted students. And that's something that, you know, I, I, I hope central office is focused on. You know, we've spent the last three years hammering remediation and kids falling behind and catching kids up. But we also have to remember the kids that are accelerated, that we have to have plenty of opportunities for them to um, really achieve their maximum. So, so I, I appreciated when I heard this because it sort of gotten out of my thought process too. But we, we need to always um, take care of those kids just as much as we need to take care of the kids that are struggling or have difficult, difficulty. So, um, so I'm, I'm really glad that we're pursuing that. And she did want me to share that she appreciated Dr. Hale and her team last week during the teacher planning period for um, whatever the presentation that they, they did. So she said it was well received and that the teachers really uh, felt like they benefited from it. And I think that's all I have. A good job on the budget. I look forward to digging into the numbers. Um, sounds like we're um, not going to be begging for money. So that's. That's a good problem to have. So, Ms. Tanner. All right. Well, I want to shout out to Beeline um, Towing. Or we had a need because of the construction at Brookville to very quickly move the shipping container that's um, after grad storage off where it was, and they moved it within 24 hours of a phone call. So they were really quick to kind of move and support for free. So that was even a, a bigger plus that after grad's not working that bill to move that shipping container out of the way of where construction was. Um, I had an opportunity today to review the three reading curriculums that are proposed at Lee's Royal Elementary School. I went in and, and looked through the second, third, and fourth grade um, curriculums as a past many years ago, but still a passion for third grade um, and the importance of reading. And it was nice to really kind of go through and see the differences in those curriculums. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where the teachers' feelings are um, and as we support those you know, there's review of those curriculums. Um, so I really appreciated that opportunity. I want to shout out to our theater department. Thank you for coming. I love hearing the students. Um, and I have also, over the years of being a Brookville grad myself, um, didn't do the theater program because, like Ms. Ferguson said, it wasn't very big then. It was small. Um, but as a parent, has been attended many um, theater programs. And the recent Bring It On was just amazing to me. And so shout out to you guys for being here and having your voice and thank you so much for for bringing that to our attention um, kudos to our Brookville band they got a superior rating at the Virginia Band and Orchestra Directors Association and they are now makes our B band a Virginia honor band so that's a pretty big accomplishment for for us and our band and you know y'all I can't if I don't shout out for our swimming program but I have to shout out to our men's that went on to state we took six um, men swimmers to state and all six of them came home with medals and were on the podium. And that was quite an accomplishment that every one of our kids that um, took off to, to support the represent Brookville for the swimming were able to come home with a, a medal in hand. So that was kind of a cool achievement for our kids. So hey. that's all I got. Yeah, yeah, we kind of went half of what you did last I week. know. Well, we, you, know, you, you went with Bon and Parker first. They took a lot of the, the same, my was. list I was crossing out over here as we were going through. So it's all good. It. As long as we get it shared. Uh, Brookville parents, supporters, and students, appreciate you all coming. Uh, we, we like to hear, you know, your concerns, and we'll do everything we can to help you. But uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I'll echo Mr. Phillips' comments on the Rustburg High School sports successes for basketball and track. Um, before I forget, Mr. Hardy, do you want to make any comments on your career day here on the 21st? I mean, it's... Just a few light comments. Say yes, it's on uh, March the 21st. Of course, that's a day that is reserved for our seniors and for our students at the Technical Center. Um, each school will have their own time. So, you know, uh, we do a good job of, of making sure that everybody gets a lot of attention. Mrs. Wilson's been hard at it this year. And again, we've lined up more than uh, 70 uh, employers and, uh, you know, uh, technical schools from around the state and different options uh, here. 
Big deal. It's a big deal. If you haven't been, I highly encourage you to come. Now, John, you said local, but didn't last year Newport News Shipbuilding? They were yes. looking for like a thousand we welders. Have a lot of local employers, but we uh, we also do have a lot of others throughout the state of Virginia or other areas. So Newport News Shipbuilding is one that um, they they even had staff come out and take a look at our manufacturing technology nice. program. Yeah, I think Vicky said they offer an apprentice program where they pay the kids, house the kids, and teach the kids. Yes, that they, they, they need so many welders. They, they, they have a school. Um, I can speak specifically to that. My stepfather actually went to the apprentice school. Um, it's not something new, uh, but it is uh, the apprentice school based out of Newport News. Um, has a direct relationship and is part of that uh, company that, that builds your aircraft carriers, your submarines, and things like that for the Navy. Um, I myself worked there um, during summers and stuff like that um, myself and worked on the, the George Washington and the USS Enterprise uh, when they were either being built and they were overhauled. And they do, they, um, they have a lot of opportunities for young people to go to school and work full time. And uh, of course they take care of the schooling when you're in the and, um, and can take care of your housing. That's a really great option for people. They even have, um, they even have sports. So they have uh, Division three football, basketball, baseball, um, you know, all, all of the regulars as part of the the Thank you. Nice. Good. Dr. Wilson, welcome here. I'm glad to have you. Uh, look forward to working with you in the future. If you got any questions, reach out to any of us. We'll do the best we can to give you a close to right answer. Uh, again, the donations are fantastic. Uh, from Ms. Ranella at Concord, she said to remind everybody that the success at Concord Elementary for being the first school in the state of having a Cycle Kids program in Virginia. It's a safe bicycling and nutrition program for our fourth and fifth graders. They're going to have a kickoff ceremony March the 29th. Uh, this is what's really impressive. They had to raise a significant amount of money and it was all raised locally like to the tone of like $25,000. So uh, we'll have her here one night to speak on it, to uh, share with us the benefits of it. And I'm finally gonna, the most entertaining thing I saw last week or the, since the last meeting was, I was at a governor's school meeting with Dr. Hale last week she said, are you coming to the dodgeball game? I said, huh? She said, you got to come to the dodgeball game at Rustburg. And I said, what's it all about? She said, you haven't been to one? So I'm going to ask, we've got at least three generations of Rustburg High School administrators. <laughs> Dr. Shields, how did you, how was it delivered to you to continue it? What, what, was, the, what was the story behind it for you to keep on promoting it and having it? Dodgeball? Uh-huh. Oh, that's a great event. We've been doing it for probably 10 years. I'm at Rustburg. At Rustburg. At Rustburg. Uh -huh. Jack Laughlin, kind of our generator. He, he gets things going, and this is his first year back doing it. So it was it was a great event. Okay. Yeah. Clean slate. Miss Slate, as you know, Miss Slate, she certainly won. Is so, this teachers against students or it's just, yeah, oh, it's students. Oh, oh strictly students. Team, but, uh, they just go at it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, it, is, it is a fundraiser. So it's a fundraiser to support the local toothpaste. Yeah. yeah, our insurance is going up. We need to, <laughs> <laughs> we need to keep so, teachers out of that. So I'm I'm walking into the gym and I asked Dr. Shields, he's at the door, I said, where am I supposed to sit? He said, sit up high where you don't get hit with a ball. <laughs> Good advice, but the Good gym, advice. the gym was 
it was like a basketball game, and it was a big deal. And I think I think a lot of students truly enjoyed the fun and being able to get aggression out and just, <laughs> I'm thinking if I threw the ball that hard, my my shoulder surgery would be off or not. But it was, it was a great, t how many teams you had, like eight or nine teams with 20? 12 teams. Uh -huh. With how many on a team? Uh, 15, they can max out at 15. So it was a, it was a wow. big, big gathering. It was a lot of fun had and my hat's off to you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, and I think that's all I got, and there is a need for a closed meeting tonight. Mr. Chairman, I move that we convene in a closed meeting for discussion or consideration of disciplinary matters or other matters that would involve the disclosure of information contained in the scholastic record concerning students in the school division, specifically students number 37 and number 38, from 2023 and 2024 school year in accordance with section 2.2-3711A2 of the Code of Virginia, 1950, as amended. Second. Motion by Dr. Miller, second by Mr. Maddox. Uh, all those in favor indicate by standing up. We'll take about a five minute recess and come back in closed session. Can I have to sling fingers? I feel like we're so close. <laughs>
I ask for a motion certifying that to the best of each member's knowledge that during our closed meeting, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting by the school board. Motion. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Maddox, seconded by Dr. Miller. All those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Opposed? Okay. So the floor is yours. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the administration's recommendation on student number 37 and approve as amended for student number 38. Second. Motion by Mrs. Vaughn, seconded by Mr. Phillips. Any questions? If none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Anything else for the good of the board? Motion to adjourn. Uh, one thing. One thing I will. One. One extra thing. It, it Karen's meeting here the other night was truly eye-opening, but we had a real good exchange with the cornerstone faculty team and, and staff. It was, there was a nice mix of it. It was really. It was really eye-opening to hear mm -hmm. their perspective. I mean. We hear Denton say stuff, and we ship them there. Mm -hmm. And the perspective there is is a lot different than we, or I would assume, as a board member. But it was really it was really interesting listening to them talk. I mean, Karen, you're new, but I was I was amazed at how they perceived getting mm -hmm. those kids over there. Well, and I think like I have walked through Cornerstone when we toured and I got to really kind of see it and I, I know I've been by before um, and, and kind of seen what went on at Cornerstone and just because I had met somebody over here to drop off something and had been able to kind of see that and you know I think we don't always give them as much credit as they deserve for what they are really doing and changing and, and I think it was eye-opening that they miss the connection, that, that how much the kids miss being connected to their home school. You know, once they really start to improve and, and get some behavior under control, and I think they're ultimately felt like they're loved and cared for, which is what most of these elementary school kids just deep down really want, um, that they, how much they really appreciate when someone comes to check on them from their home school and, and how we can make those connections a little bit. I think there's, there's work in place to make some of those connections happening. And, one thing I remember was like, you, you know, we ship them over there and we say, you can't set foot on your home right. school's property during your tenure over there. And Cornerstone is looking at it like, how do we get these kids ready to go back to their home school where they feel welcomed and not shunned like mm -hmm. we told them? And it's really, it was really eye opening to me. And it's, I mean, they said, how many have over? 10, Gosh, 8? There was probably. Close to 10. And I mean, it was very interesting to hear them. But, and I know y'all want to go home, but I just. Uh, one thing, too, Barry, when I first got on, we, it was J.J. Fry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, my first year, we were invited. They had a meal, graduation. Yeah. Oh, it was a big deal. And we went down there, and I sat down, and, and two deputies sat down beside of me, and I'm like, are y'all here for our protection? I mean, I was serious, because I figured these parents would be mad at us. And all of them come up, thank you for allowing my child to graduate. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a total, and it was a good meal, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it was also said that some of the ones who like it over there so much, they, they do just enough to get back. <laughs> to get. It's recidivism. How, what was the right term? Just but, to stay there. Yeah, they want to stay there. You know, it's. Yeah, our goal is recidivism and getting them back out. <laughs> they like to kind of do just I mean, enough to get back in. It's safe. And, and I, I will, I didn't say it during the comments, I mean, but if you know parents that got kids, they need to go listen to her talk at William Campbell or after this. I mean, it's it's eye-opening. Thank you. Uh, it, it is truly eye-opening. I'm glad my kids are grown and gone and not in jail, <laughs> but I'm afraid. Um, anything else? Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Somebody second it? Seconded. Motion, who seconded it? I seconded oh. Motion by Gary, second by Ms. Vaughn to adjourn all those waving and gay by standing up. Have a good evening. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yep. Oh, we 